Very well, welcome to you. Welcome to the show that brings you the business news and the economic debates that count. It's Economics Unbound. I'm Francis Hurd, standing in for Tundeka Nobule. Tundeka will be back next week. In the meantime, tonight, we will be looking at state-owned entities, a big headache for South African leaders and all of us as citizens. We'll look at the big picture around SOEs and then we'll zoom in on one of their business models, in fact, the one you're watching. The SABC is unusual perhaps in that we are a public broadcaster. There is a public mandate to keep all South Africans informed, but the SABC also competes in the media marketplace where everyone is vying for advertising revenues. Can this tension work? Is it sustainable for the future? That's what we'll be asking. But first, uh, let's bring in the co-host of this show, Nana. Nana, what do you think of this topic? It's an important one, Francis. SOEs are huge for South Africa. Our big ones are ESCOM, SAA, Transnet, Prasa, and the SABC that we will be exploring tonight. They can be a force for good and are meant to be the backbone of the developmental state. But there's such a drag on the economy at the moment. It's really just a sad affair. Francis, do you know that in terms of job losses, deterring investments, and weighing on growth, our dysfunctional SOEs are now a huge threat to the entire economy. So, so that is often said, Nana, but tell me exactly why. So, many of the SOEs are operating on debt. It's like a household relying on a credit card to keep food on the table. It's a dangerous situation. If they can't pay back their loans, the creditors will close the taps. Therefore, to keep the SOEs going, government has given them guarantees. These mean that if the SOEs default, government will have to pay on their behalf. In other words, taxpayer money is being used as the main backup. So this is a serious situation. If there were a series of defaults, uh, the government would be forced to make good on those guarantees uh, that Nana is talking about, and we just can't afford that. If we don't rein in SOEs and their debt, then it's feared that one day, as a country, South Africa could even uh, go looking for a handout from the IMF or another global lender, and then we could lose our control on economic policy. It seems like we're in a debt black hole, Nana. Indeed. South Africa's debt has already shot through 3 million rand, which is more than the annual budget. The interest costs are rising and that's taking money away from things like health and education. These guarantees to SOEs are already heading towards 500 billion rand and adding to South Africa's debt burden. So an SOE like ESCOM isn't only gas and coal, but our money as well. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Nana, we'll see you again a bit later. I think it's worth remembering why we have SOEs in South Africa in the first place. These are companies created by government to undertake commercial activity on its behalf. The idea is that SOEs operate where it might be uh, dangerous for a private company to operate. SOEs provide important goods and services, and this might not be done if it were left to market forces. Now, an example is electricity. That's seen as a basic right. What incentive is there for a private company to put up costly infrastructure to provide a far-flung, tiny little village with power? There may not be profits on the table, uh, but that's an example where it's important for those people to have electricity. SOEs are also involved in matters of national security or importance, so we call them strategic. But with many SOEs, that's a debate. Uh, do we need, for example, an airline that flies to important destinations for South African government officials and citizens. Some government officials do say SAA is strategic, but it could be argued that if there's really an important route, a private player will step in. And with so many airlines and maybe a connection or two, it's now possible to fly virtually anywhere in the world. That's why SAA is one of the most contentious SOEs. Government often points out that we are a developmental state where the state plays not a passive, but an active role in pursuing a particular vision for the economy. The SOEs can be used through their contracts to uplift uh, black businesses, for example. But that dream has been tarnished somewhat by the evidence uh, suggesting that uh, some of the SOEs were captured for a period to serve the interests of a small group. So right now there seems to be a tension in the governing party, the ANC, with some supporting SOEs, so all their existence, and others like the 
Finance Minister asking whether they're even necessary at all. Many are looking at the business models of SOEs and asking if they are broken or if they are sustainable. So tonight we're doing just that. We're zooming in on the SABC and looking at the financial model of the public broadcaster. The SABC in some respects is unique because it has a public mandate. Remember traditionally millions in South Africa has, have relied on the SABC as the only source of news and information. If you don't have a television, you have to rely on radio. If you can't afford DSTV or the internet, you rely on te uh, terrestrial television, which is predominantly provided by the SABC in the forms of the three channels, one, two, and three. The SABC contributes to the strengthening of democracy by bringing you party messages ahead of the elections, for example. It has a mandate to promote a national, a nation building and social cohesion. It can uplift local content providers by commissioning their work. These are all big goals, perhaps more fitting for a public broadcaster than any private company just trying to make a profit. In terms of news, there may be more profits, for example, if you tell the stories of city dwellers who read the newspapers. But it is our job at the SABC to tell the stories of poor men and women in poor areas, to find the resources to do that, to inform and educate children who may not have access to the internet. That is the SABC's public mandate. On the other hand, the SABC has a commercial funding model. And let me just show you, this will, uh, may surprise you, but here's where the money comes from. And we often uh, worry about the bailouts. The main revenue uh, for the SABC, more than 70%, in fact, comes from advertising revenues. Uh, that's in the last financial statement. A smaller amount, around 14%, comes from those contentious license fees. The SABC's total revenue is about Six and a half billion rand and less than one billion of that comes from those license fees. Uh, more than four and a half comes from advertising and a very tiny portion uh, down here comes from government unless uh, the SABC needs more money in the form of a bailout of course but uh, a small portion is allocated by government. The SABC is uh, so relying on advertising and operating in a very competitive market where there are many options for those advertisers and many organizations and the money is drying up in some cases. Now, even if you don't understand this income statement that we're going to bring you, uh, what it suggests is that the SABC's finances are not working. The SABC is spending more money than it's getting in. According to the last financial statements, the SABC made a net loss of 622 million rand last year. You can see that. So the advertising, uh, the revenue coming in is huge, six and a half billion, but more than three billion is over here being spent on staffing costs and the rest of the revenue eaten by other expenses as well. The public broadcaster has been so cash strapped that it's been warning it might not even pay salaries beyond March. The current executive uh, says there needs to be retrenchments because of that big lead, uh, red line, because of the money being spent on staffing, saying the company is bloated with too many middle managers taking your money if you pay your TV license or you pay tax. But government ministers have been opposed to the job cuts. Right now, a bailout has been agreed to in principle, but is it time to look perhaps at a radical change in the very structure of the SABC? I'll be speaking to Professor Anton Haber. We also have a Save Our SABC, a group of a coalition of lobby groups of NGOs are looking at the public broadcaster and its future. We'll be talking about this very topic after a short break. Stay with us.